I grew up traveling in the backseat of my family's wood paneled station wagon. Getting lost fills my soul. It's who I am. It's embedded in my DNA. I'm on a mission to explore and experience every country on the planet, visiting the craziest, most unique places and people in every corner of the world. I'm Jim Kitchen. Join the journey. Today I'm in the western part of Cuba in the epicenter of where they grow the finest tobacco in all of the planet. And I'm with my good friend Roberto, who is showing me how they do it. And what they do is they take these seeds, these tobacco seeds, literally millions of them, and they spread them on the lands all throughout. Oh, little, uh, there we go. And they take them, spread them all throughout the land in the distance, and then they plant them here. They replant them here after after about a month, about six inches apart, they grew up to five feet tall, they cut the flowers off, which sends all the nutrients to the leaves, and then they store them here. Roberto, for how many days? 50 days. 50 days, days 50 right? days. Exactly. And then after that, they infuse them with? With a mix, which is a family tradition. Just family tradition, what's the secret? Well, it's, <laughs> it's of, uh, honey, vanilla, vanilla, lemon juice, orange juice, we right. boil that mix, and then when it gets cold, of course, we spread that mix on the leaves. Oh, we spread them on the leaves. Yes. After they've been dried and infused, we roll them up. How many are used for a cigar? Just four or five, roughly, four or five uh -huh. And Then we just take it all. We roll everything inside. Light is. What's that called? That's the cape. That's the cape? Yep. After we use it, and we cut it. We use the cape, which is thinner, because it maintains the burning even in the cigar. You keep 10%, the government keeps 90% of yep. this, exported all throughout the world, the finest brown tobacco on the planet. Fantastic. The United States imposed a travel and trade embargo on Cuba in 1960, and the country didn't open up until 2011 when that embargo was lifted. I was so fortunate to be able to go to Cuba and experience this rich and amazing culture. Today I'm in Havana, Cuba with my good friend Orestes and we're in the house of wine. And I want to show you how they make this, this beautiful house wine. What they do is they add water, uh, they add a little bit of coloring, they heat it up, they boil it, they pour it over here, add a little bit of sugar, right? Sugar? Azucar. Mm. Okay. But well, but they pour it all in here, it cools, they at the same time, what they do is they take fruits of all, uh, grapes, papaya, piña, they squeeze it by hand, pour the juice in here, when this cools, they pour it all together. Now, here's what's unusual, they take a condom, yep, a condom, and when it's the right time, this is not the right time, this is not the right time, not the right time, not the right time. Yeah, we're getting closer, getting closer. Ah, perfecto. And then we end up with this beautiful wine made of grapes and raisins. All right. Orejenia, here we go. Okay. Yeah, uh, we'll pour some more. Salud! 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 Seeing the old cars in downtown Havana is like being in a time warp. You've got the old convertibles, the 57 Chevys, and none of these cars have the original parts. They're all sort of pieced together because of the embargo. There are so many billboards across the country. The Cuban government still believes in the revolution today. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to keep exploring and learning about the rest of the world. Join the journey.